Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, I'd like to be able to tell you that the government has decided to spend a billion pounds on Professor Dalglish's development, the intradermal mycobacterium injection that he's explained to us on a recent uh, video. Uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you that because the government are not uh, investing in it. I'd also love to be able to tell you that the government are investing heavily in uh, Professor Clancy's uh, non-typable haemophilus influenzae uh, preparation. Now, this preparation from uh, Professor Dalglish uh, uh, is an intradermal injection, and he's been using it successfully to keep many cancers uh, at bay for long periods of time. It may well prevent uh, quite a lot of cancers from developing in the first place. We don't really know, but pity someone hasn't paid for the research yet. But it does seem to upgrade the, the innate immune system quite significantly generally. And if you upgrade the immune system generally, it's going to protect against thousands, who knows, tens of thousands of potential infections. Likewise, with uh, Professor Clancy's uh, development, the oral tablet that you take upgrades the mucosal immune system. And he's developed this to protect the respiratory mucosa, but it could also be de developed to protect the gastrointestinal mucosa or the genital mucosa. Uh, again, it would work against thousands of potential infecting organisms. Unfortunately, um, I guess it's kind of difficult to patent bacteria. And why would you want a preparation that protected against just about everything? Then you wouldn't need to have a preparation that protected against everything specifically. So given that those things aren't happening, which in my view should be happening, or at least be researched really seriously, put forward by my in my view, two of the world's leading medical professors. No, that's being ignored. Uh, what are we doing? Well, I read in the uh, Telegraph, UK could be the first country to offer norovirus jab against winter vomiting bug. Uh, subtitle here, new vaccine could stop people developing the highly infectious illness after early trials suggest, uh, after early trial results found it increase, it creates a strong immune response. More on that in a minute. Now, what are we talking about here? Uh, well, this is the information here on the on the um, government. Uh, this is from the um, National Institute for Health and Care Research site, where they talk about this in detail. Uh, they also talk about their deal with uh, this group here, um, Moderna, uh, who you've probably heard of. The British government's got a long-term deal with, and. Uh, yeah, that's much the same one. Right, so this is what this is about. Now, let's get down to some of the detail. Before we get down to some of the detail, uh, norovirus is a problem. I've had it myself. It's quite unpleasant. Uh, but, but more on the detail of the infection in a minute. Let's talk about the problems because this new vaccine they're proposing is a messenger ribonucleic acid genetic preparation. They're carrying on with this program. So, problems that I would uh, want answered, or questions that I would want answered. Being a naturally curious sort of chap. Systemic distribution is inevitable, I would have thought. So, we assume this is in some sort of lipid nanoparticle for distribution. Um, we know these lipid nanoparticles go everywhere. Not just at the site of injection, as we were told with the COVID injections. Does this mean that this vaccine preparation, this genetic preparation, will circulate through the coronary arteries? I guess it does. What about the arteries of the capillaries of the brain? Also, kidneys, liver, spleen, lungs. There's going to be systemic distribution. That concerns me. Antigenic dose produced varies, so it's giving the instruction to make the antigen, not the antigen itself. So how does the body control, or how does this vaccine control, how much is actually made? Well, some people might produce a lot. Um, other people might produce a little bit. And to me, an axiom of giving any preparation is you give the right dose of the right drug to the right person via the right route at the right time. If we can't control the dose, I'm uncomfortable very uncomfortable. Uh, we don't know how long the messenger RNA is going to live inside the body. That's a question mark. Could be some time. Are they going to use a synthetic base like they did in the COVID vaccines? Oh, I'll be uncomfortable if they are. 
And are there going to be contaminants from manufacturing processes? I hope you caught that fascinating discussion with the uh, leading Canadian scientist, uh, David, uh, uh, Dave, Dr. David Speaker, on um, DNA contamination. Anyway, let's those concerns expressed. Let's look at what's happening. Um, National Institute for Health and Care Research. Nice grand sounding title in the UK. First phase three randomized clinical trial, NOVA 301 trial. It's an mRNA vaccine. So that's the name of the trial as far as I can gather, NOVA 301 trial. mRNA uh, 1403 is the name of the preparation. Um, now, I think you, I think I'm, I've, I've made this name up, trivalent. I think it's correct, even with these genetic preparations, because it's targeting three major strains of norovirus, the winter vomiting bug, so called. Well, I must say, when I had it, uh, vomiting wasn't the main problem. It was the uh, quite profuse watery diarrhea was the main problem, but we won't go too much into that. Um, mRNA norovirus vaccine, UK wide sites this trial is going to be over 39 sites so it sounds quite well organized going for 39 sites sponsored by moderna and as far as i know the vaccines are going to be produced in their new plant at harwell science park not sure about that but we know that harwell science park oxford the building a factory capable of producing 250 million of these uh, per year in their long-term partnership with my government Uh, trial evaluates the efficiency and safety of their new mRNA product. Aims to recruit 2,500 participants by basically by the end of this year uh, in the UK. Some mobile sites for community visiting, so it looks like they're going to be going out to nursing homes and potentially vaccinating uh, people in nursing homes. Half are going to get the mRNA, half are going to get the placebo. Anyone over 18 can apply as far as I understand it, but mostly over 60s is, is wanted. And uh, to be fair, that does make sense because it's mostly people over 60 that will be at greater risk. Although this is generally a self-limiting uh, illness in the vast majority of people. There are some complications and some deaths, but um, most people it's a self-limiting uh, illness. A uh, single dose of vaccine is going to be given... Um, now, the site says uh, a jab in the upper arm. Presumably, they mean an intramuscular injection into the deltoid. They don't say that. Um, if they are, are they going to make aspiration part of the protocol so as to avert the risk of uh, inadvertent intravascular administration? It doesn't mention it on the site if they are, although I would hope that would be my preference that they are. Uh, at least six person, uh, six in-person visits to the trial centre for the participants. Uh, five phone calls to the trial team. So it sounds like there's fairly good follow-up. This is part of a 10-year partnership between Moderna and the UK Health Security Agency on behalf of the UK government, proudly announcing this. Uh, UK Vaccine Innovation Pathway, VIP, and the National Institutes of Health, what is it called? National Institutes of Health and Care Research, working together to accelerate vaccine trials in the UK. So they want to accelerate. They don't go too fast. Dr. Patrick Moore, Chief Investigating Officer of the Trial of the UK, really pleased to be able to play an important role in helping find an effective vaccine against this highly contagious disease, which of course sounds good in itself. Um, Chief Executive uh, Professor uh, leveraging the UK's expertise in vaccine development in the Department of Health and Social Care, vaccine through the National Institutes of Health and Care Research, so many acronyms, and Moderna are delivering this large-scale trial at PACE. Uh, I think I took most of that from here. Check, check it out. It's all on there. It sounds very, very positive indeed when you read this uh, communication. Very upbeat uh, document in, in my reading. Read it for yourself. Let me know what you think. Not my job to tell you what to think. Uh, so that people across the UK and the world can benefit sooner. From this site, the NOVA 301 trial serves as a model for future collaborations between public and private sector in advancing medical research. 
let's hope they don't go too uh, too quickly. Um, they want to uh, accelerate accelerate the rate of development. Let's hope they don't accelerate to um, oh I don't know warp speed. Presumably they'll just progress at the speed of science. There doesn't seem to be any cognizance here taking of the number of adverse reactions from the previous round of mRNA vaccines. They're just carrying on with this new uh, trial for yet another mRNA uh, vaccine. Word is when the uh, torpedoes, uh, when the icebergs were spotted on the uh, transatlantic trip, the captain of the Titanic said full steam ahead. Incredible now to look back on that. This is a completely separate matter, of course. This is just a history talk. Iceberg spotted full steam ahead. Let me know if you're concerned. Um, Will I be volunteering to take part in mRNA research? Mm, no. Um, will I be taking any more mRNA vaccines? Mm, no. Unless, of course, we are left with a mandated, a mandated situation. But voluntarily, I certainly won't be taking any. There we go. Let me know what you think. Just a bit of background. I'm going to talk about norovirus. Now, um, norovirus is a problem. It, it, it is an issue. Um, here we see, uh, this is from the uh, states, is it the, I can't remember now, is it the CDC site or the FDA site? One of the American ones. Anyway, this is the number of cases in the United States. Average number of reported norovirus outbreaks by month uh, 2009 uh, to 2009. 2017, which is the latest figures they have. And we do see it is very prevalent here in, in the winter months. And we also see that most of it is not foodborne. Most of it is uh, transmitted, uh, mo mostly person to person. And it is a very transmissible uh, condition. When, when one person on the ward has it, <laughs> quite a few other people got it. I, I got it myself from a patient in, in A&E. It's, it's very common, very common. Um, now, a bit, bit, bit more detail about it. Norovirus. Worldwide, about one out of every five cases of acute gastroenteritis is caused by norovirus. In other words, 80% um, are not. They're caused by other things. Now, the trial people here say they're looking for an efficacy of about 65%. And assume there they're talking about relative risk. I would be surprised if the absolute risk reduction was more than 1% or 2% from this. And if when these papers are written, if, if we're still making videos, we'll certainly be at pains to point out the difference between the absolute risk and the relative risk. Because to me, I'm more interested in the absolute risk. What is the risk to me in any particular year? Or what is the risk to one of my uh, patients if I, uh, if I had patients at that time? So... About one in five, so a common problem, and not poo pooing it by any means. If you, you, you well, I was well knocked off for a good few days when I had it. Um, gastroenteritis typically develops 12 to 48 hours after ingestion of contaminated food or water or contact with an infected person, so 12 to a couple of days incubation period, typically a day or so. Symptoms normally last for 24 to 72 hours, all ages can be affected. Nausea and vomiting are common features, although personally I only had the uh, diarrhoea. Uh, very, very watery diarrhoea. Um, now, the, um, the vomiting is, does not contain blood unless there's some other lesion of the upper gastrointestinal tract. Uh, it's not bilious either. It doesn't contain bile typically. And likewise, the diarrhoea doesn't contain blood or pus or anything like that. It's just very watery uh, diarrhoea. Possible dehydration is, is, of course, a risk. So we advise these patients to drink plenty, potentially take all rehydration salts. Uh, just sip those every 10 minutes or so. Abdominal cramps, common feature. Headaches, low-grade fever. 
aches and pains and uh, feeling generally uh, unwell, as you would expect. Now, the norovirus genus, there's more than 40 different strains. You may have heard of this one, G24 Sydney is the one that was causing most outbreaks in the United States and I think the UK most recently. But 40 different strains and the um, if the vaccine stroke genetic preparation covers for uh, three, then there's another 37 at least to uh, potentially cause infection. Transmission, person-to-person direct contact, exposure to aerosol, so it's easy to catch, uh, or faecal oral routes. And it's incredibly effective, the, the, the ID50. So this, this idea here, ID50 is the infectious dose required to infect 50% of people. It's 10 virions, 10 viral particles. So uh, if someone's exposed to 10 viral particles and they're not, they're not immune to it already, 50% chance they'll get the disease. So um, wouldn't it be nice to see the government spending money on preparations like intradermal mycobacterium vacai and abensis? Uh, from uh, that Professor Dalgleish told us about to upgrade the innate immune system or preparations such as non-typable haemophilus oral influenzae orally uh, Professor Clancy has pointed out will increase the uh, mucosal immunity but that will these preparations will both protect against a wide range of infections um, it seems that the approach of the government and pharmaceutical industry is just to tackle one at a time I would have thought it would be best to cover someone for hundreds or thousands at a time rather than one at a time. But hey, yeah, what do I know? You've got brains. You know, pe- 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 people often ask me, you know, people that come on for interviews uh, say, who, who is this channel aimed at? And um, what, what, what I say is it's aimed at the intelligent, non-specialist viewer. Um, so... All I'm trying to do is give you the information. You have the intellect to work this out for yourself. Are we going down the right path or not? Let me know what you think. Personally, I am uncomfortable. Thank you for watching.